Preload is a fundamental concept in cardiovascular physiology, essential for understanding the mechanics of the heart. It is usually determined by measuring the end diastolic ventricular pressure or estimating the end diastolic volume. In this short video, I will demonstrate that preload is actually the initial stretching of the cardiac myocytes before contraction, known as the wall stress. This stretching is influenced by the volume of blood returning to the heart, the pressure applied on the wall, and the wall thickness of the ventricle. This stretching directly impacts the force of the subsequent cardiac contraction, according to the Frank-Starling law. To understand it better, let's look at the relationship between the pressure and the volume in the left ventricle. During the filling phase of the left ventricle, known as diastole, blood flows from the left atrium into the ventricle. Initially, the ventricular pressure rises minimally, despite significant volume increase due to the ventricle's high compliance. However, as the ventricle continues to fill and reaches higher volumes, the pressure rises more steeply, reflecting increased stiffness of the ventricular walls. This graph depicts what we call the end diastolic pressure volume relationship, known as EDPVR curve. The EDPVR curve gives more information on the elasticity of the left ventricle, which is defined as the left ventricle's ability to change its pressure in response to changes in volume, and it is calculated as the ratio of pressure to volume. Elastance equals pressure divided by volume. As we just mentioned, as the ventricle fills with blood, elastance is low, reflecting high compliance and minimal pressure increase despite a significant volume increase. However, as filling continues and the end diastolic volume rises, elastance increases, indicating that the ventricle becomes stiffer and less compliant. This increased elastance during diastole means that the ventricle requires a higher pressure to accommodate additional volume, demonstrating the progressively reduced capacity of the ventricular walls to stretch further. Now, at end of diastole, what is the indicator of the preload? Is it the end diastolic volume or the end diastolic pressure? While both volume and pressure are critical factors, relying solely on pressure or volume does not provide a complete picture. Pressure can vary significantly with changes in ventricular compliance, while volume alone does not account for the actual stress experienced by the ventricular wall. Therefore, preload is more accurately defined as the left ventricular wall stress at the end of diastole, which is related to multiple factors included in the Laplace law. This law relates the wall stress in a spherical or cylindrical vessel to the pressure, radius, and thickness of the wall. The formula for left ventricular wall stress, denoted as sigma, is generally expressed as sigma equates to the intraventricular pressure multiplied by the radius of the ventricle divided by two times the wall thickness. This means that preload is influenced directly by both the volume of blood in the ventricle and the pressure at the end of diastole, and inversely by the thickness of the left ventricle wall. The volume of the left ventricle can be calculated from the radius, assuming the left ventricle is a sphere by the formula in the red box. The wall stress is typically measured in millimeters of mercury. In conclusion, preload is defined as the wall stress on the left ventricle at the end of diastole and is determined by three critical factors. The radius of the left ventricle, which is the end diastolic volume, the pressure within the ventricle at end of diastole, and the thickness of the ventricular wall. Thank you for watching.